Um, welcome. All right, so this module is Inheritance and Linkage Disequilibrium. And we'd like to start by thanking our funders who provided uh, the camera equipment and uh, money for food so that we could all you know, survive through this session. Um, yes, uh, that's UCLA Computational Medicine. So the first thing we're going to learn about is inheritance. This is a very complex topic, which I will discuss in like one slide. And that is that we inherit our genomes from our parents. So I got this copy of my DNA from my dad and this copy of DNA from my mom. And that's a total lie. So <laughs> and it's a total lie because of this fun thing called recombination. So over here, it looks like this copy of DNA was like exactly from my dad. And like, I just took one of his chromosomes and he gave it to me through a sperm and my mom took one of her chromosomes and gave it to me through an egg. And that's not quite how it happens. So what recombination is, is it occurs in our parents. So this is my dad's DNA right here. And we've labeled one of his copies of his DNA with capital letters and the other with lowercase letters. So when he goes on to make sperm or my mom goes on to make eggs, we call these gametes, I think. I'm not a real yes. biologist. <laughs> yeah, gametes. Okay. They don't just take one of the copies of DNA and like shove it into that gamete. First, what happens is you do this thing called recombination. Very complex process. I know nothing about it other than the two copies of DNA, they snuggle up and they share a little material. <laughs> and what you're left with is two complete chromosomes, but some of the information or some of the haplotype from one chromosome to the other. So if I were to look up here, like this part of this chromosome is identical to my dad. And this part, or not my dad, is identical to the little one over here. And like this part of Big B is identical to that part of Big B, but like right over the switch here, like this is part A, part like part lowercase and part uppercase, and that does not exist in my dad. That's like a completely new haplotype that just came into existence because some of the variation here got swamped. Some of the variation here got swamped with some of the variation over there. And then one of these guys is what actually gets placed into the gamete in what I inherited. So what I had really similar to my dad was just like slight changes that occur. So here's my dad. And if one of these recombinations occur, and I'm looking at three different variant positions, there's a couple places it could happen. So it could happen between these two positions. So as you can see, this GTA is in switched places with the, with the deletion up there. So now the GTA is on the same one as the T, and the T as opposed to the A and the T. Or I could have the recombination occur in this position, in which case this A gets bumped up to the top haplotype and vice versa. Or I could have no recombinations occurring. Uh, between those variants. So these recombinations are really rare. They occur on average every like 50 to 60 million base pairs. So remember, each of these represents a base pair. So that's like not very often at all. In which case, let's say my dad is going through recombination. Which of these haplotype combinations is most likely the outcome? after this whole recombination process runs. How likely is it for a recombination to occur between these two versus between those two versus just not to occur between the variants? <laughs> it's, it's less likely if it's a smaller region, right? Because Exactly, because if it only happens every 50 to 60 million, so if here's a recombination, the next one is until you're like 50 million base pairs that direction. And so if you're just looking at two on positions, on average, <laughs> so if you're just kind of looking at two positions in the genome that are pretty near each other, the chances of a recombination happening between those is really, really small, just because not that many recombinations happen. Because here there's only one, two, three, four, five opportunities for a recombination. Whereas if there was another million base pairs in here, then there would be like a million and five opportunities for a recombination. How many of you did I lose on that? Show of hands, so you lost? Let's say it one more time. Okay. <laughs> so 
recombinations occur every 50 to 60 like million base pairs on average. So if I have one recombination here, on average the next one's gonna occur way down the genome there, right? So let's look at this one. This one, let's say it occurred. And now uh, you have a whole bunch of variation coming on, right? What's the probability of another recombination event occurring right here if the average distance between them is 50 to 60 million? Basically? It's like zero, right? This is not gonna happen. Um, it's approaching zero. It's approaching zero. But this happens millions of times, like in your body alone. So, um, yeah. so, so, recombination events happen on average very far apart from each other, and this they're not frequent. And so, if you look at any position in the genome of two variants that are like close to each other, chances are a recombination is not going to happen between them, because that's like. It's like the lottery. You might have better chances to win the lottery than having a recombination event occur between these like two steps right there. Um, Whereas if you have two variants that are really far apart, um, then it's very likely that there could be a recombination event. Yeah. Like if they're on opposite ends of the chromosome, there probably will be some kind of recombination somewhere along the line. Exactly. So one way to think of this is every base pair is like a lottery ticket. So if you only have five lottery tickets, you're not gonna win the recombination lottery in recombine. But if you have like a million lottery tickets between two variants, you have a much higher chance of having a recombination occur. That's probably a much better analogy. Okay, I should remember that for the future. Um, it's on film now. It's on film now, <laughs> future forever. Going viral. Um, okay, so, so here's my parents again. And of course, I don't get their actual genomes, but I get a recombination. So in my mom, we can see for this portion of their genome, no recombination occurred. However, in my dad, there was a recombination event, um, switching the indel around, and then I will then inherit one of these recombined chromosomes from both of my parents. So that's what I really inherit. 